There's a new type of disruption emerging in the area of CRE financing. It's a way to raise money via a new solution which is compliant with US SEC regulations. It's called tokenization and it is based on security tokens. What we see today is we're always searching for new buyers out there. I mean, we can only trade back and forth to the same private equity groups that own hotels, buy and sell with each other so many times. The biggest challenge for us is trying to, you know, open up new frontiers of capital out there. The idea that, you know, a traditional hotel owner, how are they going to react to new capital coming in, the ability to monetize their position, either a minority or majority position. I think the more investors we have, the more buyers we have, the more liquidity we have. Uh, I think that only drives the uh, transactions market even further. At the end of the day, you would sell a hotel asset and you can either own that asset for a long period of time or you sell that asset. The, the biggest and hardest thing in, in what we see in our business is how does an owner take advantage of monetizing perhaps a minority interest in the asset, taking some of their chips off the table and delevering their asset from an equity risk perspective. And so the opportunity to go out there and try and sell a half an asset or a quarter of an asset, the market doesn't really exist for that. So it's pretty much a black and white situation. And so what's interesting about the tokenization model and what we'll be discussing today is how do you, how do you recreate the idea of investing in real estate without it being so black and white? How do you open up the investor universe, not just to private equity, to public REITs, to high net worth individuals, but can you open up in, you know, investing in real estate, in hotels in particular, to, to other uh, groups with money? Can it be an individual investor that can invest in real estate and say, I own a piece of an asset? This is a gorgeous property. Can you tell me a bit about it? I'd love to. We have 179 guest rooms, 30 suites. This is a, one of our three specialty suites. And then we also have 25 residences, two and three bedrooms, which our fractional ownership has. Fantastic. We did a private placement. Uh, the technical name for the private placement is a Reg D 506C. So once you actually uh, look at what it means, it means that it's a private placement to accredited investors. So you need to be a professional investor in order to enjoy the participation. We wanted to have a diversification of type of investors. So we have some professional ones, some real estate ones, some high net worth. And we also wanted a diversification from a geographical point of view because to make a market, you need to have different people with different view on one particular product. I think it was different, and I think whenever something is different, it requires a, a real pioneer to get the first transaction through to completion. I mean, in the past, there have been some large examples. Rockefeller Center at one point was, was an example of a, of a single asset REIT, but they've been very rare up to this point, and it's been difficult to convince institutional investors to come into this asset class. One of the other, I think one of the other issues is, I think that, there's a feeling of safety with diversity. I think the modern REIT phenomenon that began probably with the Kimco transaction in the early 1990s, there was a thought about safety and conservatism was introduced into the REIT marketplace. We could imagine the tokenization process as a regular securities offering, and in fact, a highly efficient way to conduct a securities offering but we also felt and discussed with the management team at Elevated Returns, you know, the need to conduct the, the tokenization process in compliance with federal and state securities laws. The same technology that allowed us to create these tokens with ERC-20, well, we should be able to add additional software on top of that that can make them automatically comply with those securities regulations. And that allowed us to jump into the third wave, which we're in right now, of security tokens. And these are fully compliant, and they're typically issued under uh, a crowdfunding exemption of some sort. Uh, as Stefan said earlier, uh, they used Reg D, and that tends to be the most popular uh, 
exemption that people are using. The beauty with the security token, it exists on what we call a cap table, or if you want a shareholders list. So if someone was to steal token, we would know that the current owner of the token is not supposed to own it, and you can actually move the token back to the original owner, so it's actually super safe. The other layer for the audit was what we call functionality. And that is basically a third party testing, back testing the, the contract itself to make sure that the contract is doing what the contract is supposed to do. So if you want to liquidate your token, they can find a buyer for you and they can do it uh, rather immediately. Uh, and so that is primarily what most of the security token exchanges that people are talking about now are using in order to build an exchange to trade security tokens. However, uh, T0 actually recently joined up with Box Digital to create a JV to pursue a national securities exchange mm. to trade security tokens. So yeah, this is really one of the, the sort of holy grails of this whole conversation is that the key benefit of this security token world is this liquidity that may happen someday, but without these guys kind of draw, drumming it up, right. it's that, that benefit is, is not there. Absolutely. So we need them. Wave three is the security tokens. It's the regulated space. It's where investors can go and know that they are uh, protected by all the investor regulations that the SEC has been enforcing for you know almost a century. Right. Uh, and, and that's what, what we're really focused on here. So we're really talking about three types of exchanges. It's the traditional stock exchanges, uh, we've got the new cryptocurrency exchanges, and then now these burgeoning, these coming security token exchanges. Yeah, and we might start seeing the lines get blurred, actually, between the traditional stock exchanges and the security token exchanges, especially because you have uh, big market players like NASDAQ, mm -hmm. who has basically said that they are totally committed to this blockchain security token ecosystem. Thank you.